The Palestinian president was outraged when Donald Trump recognized Jerusalem as Israel's capital, but telling the White House, damn your money and may your house be destroyed, wasn't perhaps the best way to enhance his cause. My guest this week is Ibrahim Qureshi, Palestinian ambassador to the UN here in Geneva. His government wants a Middle East peace conference, but does he seriously think anyone will show up? Ibrahim Kreshi, welcome to Conflict Zone. Thanks, Art. Welcome. And the mission of the state of Palestine, Geneva. Let me start with the U.S. decision to recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital. Your president said we will not accept for the U.S. to be a mediator because after what they've done to us, a believer shall not be stung twice in the same place. And then he told Donald Trump, damn your money and may your house be destroyed. What kind of effect do you think that sort of rudeness has on the diplomatic process? And this announcement was unexpected, first of all, for the Palestinians and the international community, because before that, four meetings was been organized by my president and Trump, and he visited us, you remember, last year. Why was year. it unexpected? Trump said throughout his campaign that he was going to recognize Jerusalem. But all, 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 all the previous president, they said so, but they didn't move to practical well, this decision. one made it a campaign promise. A campaign promise, and the others, they did it, some of them. But now... Damn your money and may your house be destroyed. I mean, you can't afford to talk to your biggest donor like that, can you? Yes, yes, the Americans, they are, they are supporting us in some way, but for us... In some way? In a big way? In, in, a some, big way. in some way, no, in no, no. Way. There, is, there is something, they are supporting the authority, but if you come to talk about the obligation on UNRWA, grants and contribution, it's not for the Palestinian Authority. It was been designed 1949 by the decision by the General Assembly. You're so talking about the U.S. decision to withhold 65, yes, 65 million dollars. It's an obligation, by the way. It's not any financial uh, support to the Palestinian P&A, the Palestinian Authority. It's Except an obligation. That this is the agency that looks after Palestinian refugees. So it's yes. going to it's going to hit. Your yes. people. Yes, yes, but now. And if you talk like that to the Americans, what do you expect? Now, now what we have expect? we have we have different ways to find the support for the UNRWA. On fifteenth of this month, in Roma, there is a ministerial conference organized by the uh, UNRWA commissioner director, and the secretary general is going to attend that. And I guess that the ministers all who are going to attend that they will declare the increase of their contribution to the UNRWA to cover this Ambassador, gap. my point is this. You insult the Americans. You say, um, damn your money to them. What do you expect they're going to do? Your, pe we, your, we, people, we will, your people are going to suffer as a result of this outburst. Yani we will continue, are you happy with that? You, you, you proud of you, that? You, you, we will insult anyone who is going to touch our rights. Our rights is not for money. Our dignity is not formal. So you don't care whether your people suffer we, as a we, result we, of these we, insults we are, or not, We are do suffering you? since 70 years ago. It's not new for us. And we can live without the American money. We can find a way. But the Palestinian national dignity and rights is not for sale. It's not for many. Because of that, we start our resistance to try to find a peaceful solution to end the occupation and to end the suffering for Palestinian refugees and the Palestinians inside. West Bank is Jerusalem and Gaza. But Trump has a point. If you're going to ignore American peace efforts, he says you don't appear to be interested in making peace. Why should they continue to write checks for you? Why should they? And, he, and, yesterday, you, and you disrespect them. Yesterday he said something which is also important, that there is no peace in the region without the Palestinians. And we are not rejecting and we are not refusing any peaceful solution, but this one should be based on the international consensus, the international You're not agreements. refusing anything you said, we will not accept for the U.S. to be a mediator. A sole mediator, yes, we will not accept more after those years and after this announcement. U.S. are not welcome to be a sole broker or mediator for the peace, but we can you're, you're find You're in no position to make conditions like that. You can't get a deal without the U.S. 
We want them. We want them. We want them. But we want them in different multilateral. Oh, you want them on your conditions as opposed to on their conditions. Not our conditions. You're not in the. You're not in the condition to lay down the law to them. We are not talking about a Palestinian condition. We are talking about the international legitimacy. The resolutions of the UN, the Security Council, the General Assembly, the Arab Initiative, the previous administration, what they agreed with us, the Oslo uh, agreement. Administrations come and, and go. You have to deal with the new reality. The new reality is Trump in the White House. Trump isn't prepared to go on writing checks if you're not serious about making peace. Hala, reality is not a must. No one can yani, uh, impose it on our people. The reality is that the Americans are central to any peace deal. If you want a peace deal, we want them, there's no way. We want, them, no way. we want them on a very clear basis. We will not waste more time after Oslo. It's now more than 20 years without any fruits. Every day there is a new... Israeli violations, annexating land, building settlements. Now, what, 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 what you are talking about? Until now, the Americans and the current administration, they didn't say it, that we are in favor of the two-state solution. And this two-state solution, according to the international agreements and declaration and the UN resolutions, should be based on the occupied territories 1967 with East Jerusalem as the capital of the state of Palestine. And this, this, was, is, this is the message you took to Moscow because you didn't like what the Americans were saying to you. You thought you could play the Americans off against the Russians or the Russians off against the Americans. No, they, we didn't, want, they didn't offer we, you any help. We, the Russians we, didn't we, we offer want, you any help. We want, to, we want them all. Not to the Russians. We want Germany. We want to the yes, UK. Yes, you went to the, the European EU. Union. And didn't the you? EU, they agree with us. No, they this, didn't. On this basis. You on asked. Basis. You asked for formal recognition from Federica Mogherini, the Foreign Affairs Chief at the EU, and she said no. You got some nice words, but you didn't get your formal recognition. Now, one they of turned the turned you down. One of they the ideas. One of the ideas that we are working on now to preserve the two-state solution as an agreement. All are supporting this idea. It's the only game on the, the, in the town, as they usually say. So we are asking our friends around the world to recognize the state of Palestine, to preserve this idea. Nevertheless, it will become by de facto one state. But this one state, I don't think that it will be a democratic one. It will go and it started apartheid. We will not give up. We will continue our our, our you, resistance until we end the occupation started 1960. You are asking for a Middle East peace conference this year for which you are totally unprepared. You also say you're going to hold elections also this year. You think the world's going to sit down and talk peace if Hamas wins your elections? Do you think they'll Allah, sit down and Allah, talk peace with you? Allah, you haven't Allah, prepared Allah, for we, any of we, this, have we, you? We have our obligations and our agreements signed with the Israelis and with the supervision of the international law. We are respecting the international law. We'll and come Hamas, on to that. And the Hamas, and Hamas, if they won the elections, if they won the elections, they should respect what was being agreed before with the PLO as the sole legitimate representative for the Palestinian people. They don't without respect that. that. Without they don't, that. They don't, and you know if, if you it. You know they it, don't it respect will be, it. It will be difficult later. But now we have in a very yani, close, close uh, uh, consultations and discussions with our brother with Hamas to find a way, first of all, to end this separation between us and to agree on a political blue, political. Mr. Kishi, it's not going well. Your unity deal, which was signed in October, this is the latest deal of many that have fallen yes. through. Mm. It's over. It's dead in the water. No, no, I don't. I don't say. February that. the 20th. I, I was attending several meetings between between the, the stakeholders. I think it's going very difficult, slowly, slowly. But for us, we the believe UN special coordinator says your deal has already broken down. The implementation, he said, February the 20th. This is Nikolai Mladenov. He said the implementation of the Egyptian brokered intra-Palestinian agreement has stalled. It's stalled. It's yeah, not maybe going it was, it so was, it's broken it was, down. It was an old one, but now the last few days it, there is something. February twentieth is just over two weeks ago. Uh, there is something encouraging after the visit of the Egyptian uh, team, and there is now meetings is going to take over between Fatah and Hamas. This was a deal to agree to this agree was a deal. to agree on the procedural issues how we are going to end that. There is 10 years, it's not an easy. You've been, not you've be been discussing this weeks. for 10 years and you've been getting nowhere for 10 no, years. No, the serious discussion started uh, I mean, 
very simply. You can't agree on who's going to collect taxes in Gaza. You can't agree on who's should going be, to police. It should be police the, legitimate, the legitimate government. This is our problem. You we can, want, you can say it should we be. Want, Hamas we want, doesn't we agree. Want. Hamas, they should expect that. We have to go for one authority, one law, and one woman under a national supervision. We don't want to But you're nowhere near that. Hamas have we already are working said on they're that. not going we to give up trying, their weapons. We are trying to convince our brothers uh, from Hamas, and there is some well, you're not getting from... very far with that, are you? It you're needs, not getting it, very it's, far. It needs a time, but it's our target to reach this moment to unite Gaza and West It's Bank. not happening. Right after your so-called agreement on reconciliation, the head of Hamas in the Gaza Strip, Yaha Sinwa, he said, no one in the universe can disarm us. On the contrary, we will continue to have the power to protect our citizens. That doesn't no, seem are, as though are, you're are, going to have one weapon. We are not talking about disarming Hamas, but we are looking you for said one having weapon. You said one, one weapon under, under a legitimate leadership because we don't want to allow any group later to use that in different so you think Hamas ways. is going to become the armed wing of Fatah? Then, I is think it? if they think uh, nationally, the of the if, if they think nationally, they have to accept. And it's not now an issue. The main issue is to find the mechanism to start to implement this agreement, which was being signed before three months in Cairo. And there is some positive signs. And I think that some of the Hamas leaders now they recognize that the only way for the first positive step towards fighting away is the reconciliation based on the national agreement. And that's and why Hamas is already ruling out recognition of Israel. No one has the ability to extract from us recognition of the occupation. This is what Mr. Sinwa, the head of Hamas in the Gaza Strip, said. Yeah, it's, so you're it's, nowhere it's, with this it's, unity. It's not a must, by the way, for Hamas to recognize Israel or Fatah to recognize Israel. But we understand that the state of Palestine is recognizing Israel. And PLO recognized. And we signed that, the bilateral recognition, 1993, when we signed Oslo. So the factions is not yani, a must for them. Because a lot like what, what's going on in, in, in Israel, different political, they didn't recognize even the coexistence of the Palestinians. We are not talking. There is a united but government we are talking in Israel. The there are armed the, forces that the obey the civilian administration uh, the, in Israel. You don't have that. You have, no. you have different voices, you have Hamas, you have Islamic Jihad. You haven't thought about any of these and details. In, in, you call an international peace know, deal, and know, who are know, the people going to negotiate I know with? The Israelis also, they have different views, different voices. I work with, it's not quite the same I, as I, this, I, is it? I, I work, I work Mr. With Ambassador, the, I, it's not I, quite I, the same I was as working this. at the Negotiations Affairs Department during the good era of Rabin. Then, we faced the same current coalition also opposing what Rabin was doing. Because of that, they assassinated him. So it's always happening, but we have to deal with the legitimate representative according to the results of any future elections in Palestine is, or in Israel. The fact is, Ambassador, as the UN coordinator put it last month, there can be no Palestinian state without Palestinian unity. And you are nowhere near Palestinian unity. We understand and we are working hard for that. You've been working said, for 11 years on it, this it and failing, take, working it take, and it will, failing it will, it. it will take time, but I'm sure that one day, sure, and it's yani, not very far from now. This year, we should come up with this You've unity. You've had these promises before. Meanwhile, your, your Palestinian authority is illegitimate, isn't it? It's widely seen as illegitimate and corrupt. You haven't had elections in more than 10 years in defiance of your basic law. 70% of your people want Abbas to resign. Now, 77% believe the Palestinian authorities institutions house corruption and more than 60 percent say they're afraid to even criticize the palestinian authority yani you, you should, produce you the should, climate you should, of you fear should, you should check once again of those information yes uh, we are they like come from the palestinian we, center we are, for policy are, and survey we, research. we are like any other nation around the world the this is not like the, any the, other the, nation the, in the, the world. corruption is everywhere but not what you mentioned now because there is sometimes a political use for those pools and for those opinions. And You're I saying the Palestinian exactly Center for Policy and Survey Research, they've been registering the same results for years. Which one? 
Palestinian Center for Policy and Survey Research. They said that 70 percent they are 70 percent want that Abbas to resign. I now. I saw I saw the rec the last one. It was last uh, last month. Yeah, in in, in, in February. It's totally different. Totally the different. Statistics. From the same yeah. from the same organization. And we are really. following those cases. And you know that we have really. I, this I, is I, just over two months ago, December 2017, three months ago. And there is another one last month, last really? February. And it's changed that much, it's, has it's, it? It's changed, but the corruption, we are following that. There is, there is any, a legal system is following, there is a department, there is an, a, 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 a commission is following all those cases. But as, as I said, yani, we, are, we, are, we are going to, to fix all of that during you've been our, saying this our, for our, years. Our, our, the legal, our the legal system. You, you've been saying this for years. You, you want a lot from the international community, and, and you get a lot from the international community, but you refuse time and time again to address the complaints that the international community has to you. Last, last June, the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, this is the most senior human rights official in the United Nations, criticized your non-compliance with his calls for accountability. He urged you to conduct prompt, impartial, independent investigations of all alleged violations of international human rights law. Non-compliance. I am following with the that personally. Believe me, I am following that personally. There is two, three Why cases. Why is there non-compliance? Two, two, from your two side? three cases. I am following that. In two days, I am going also to meet with a special rapporteur on torture and uh, freedom of expression. And we have the cases. You can meet there all is, you want, is, but you're not stopping there is, it. There is, you're there, not is, stopping there is some it. cases, it's you're mistakes, but it. it's not a policy from our side. There is some personnel from the police, from the agencies, they are doing So, so. why do you keep them hired? So why, why is it year after are, year are, the are, same we are, thing? We are, we are trying to come over all of that. Everywhere you can find it, even in Switzerland. Your president gets up at the Security Council on February the 20th and talks about rule of law, yes. accountability, sure. transparency, sure. environment of tolerance, yes. which is nonsense, isn't it? It's no, nonsense. No, 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 no. We are working on that. Everywhere you will find the mistakes. You have some obstacles. Everywhere. Why Even. keep pretending that you have this rule of law and accountability when the UN and every major human rights organization knows that this is not true? If Why you, keep pretending if you, if, to if, the outside if, world? If it's if a you, game, if, isn't it, if, to you? If, if you take a look on the last report of the High Commissioner, which was going to be presented in the front of the Human Rights Council, 19th of this September, there are some recommendations, there are some concerns he raised, there is four or five cases, which is nothing if you compare it with any, even in Switzerland. We are going to follow us and to follow that and to fix four all of that and to put those are responsible in the front of justice. Four or five cases. In its latest annual report, Human Rights Watch said both the Palestinian Authority and Hamas arrested activists who criticized their leaders, security forces or policies, mistreated and tortured some in their custody. The Independent Commission for Human Rights in Palestine received, do you know how many complaints of torture and ill treatment? by Palestinian Authority security forces, 205 in the last year. For last year? Yes, and you telling me this is just a few cases. Yeah, this is nonsense, I, I, isn't I, it? I, I don't, this is nonsense, 205 I, I cases of all, torture and mistreatment. All. For me, the trusty side is the High Commissioner Office in Palestine and the High Commissioner reports. You don't trust your own people? No. No, some of them maybe they you don't are, trust, they are for using instance, that. Where is the third party, like the UN, is a trusty body for us. There are some cases, I'm recognizing that. I'm not saying that we are perfect as the others, cases. but we are following, at, it's not a policy. We are trying to follow all those issues and sometimes I'm, 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 I'm contacting the president directly. I've been, hearing there is not the same, accepting. I've been hearing the same answers for years. Your own independent corruption watchdog, the Coalition for Integrity and Accountability, Aman. Last month, it highlighted a lack of serious political will in combating corruption. Why? Why is there the lack of serious political it's will? It's good. It's good that we have a man and the others that are talking about that. Yeah, but what they're saying is not good, is it? They're and saying, flashing, but we are trying to, to fix all. They're saying, that. despite repeated promises by the authorities to deal with them, some forms of corruption have been practiced for years. For years, I don't know which cases you are talking about. They're talking so about no corruption over those special cases. They're but, talking about corruption but, over but appointments policy, to senior positions. Of lack of my oversight. leadership, the policy of my leadership of our uh, government is to follow all of those, and I recognize that no one is perfect. We are trying to do our utmost until we find a way to 
find ourselves in different circumstances concerning this, this uh, issues. You have committed to outlawing practices like torture and arbitrary arrest. Year after year, we get the same reports coming in that no action is taken against the security forces. You had a demonstration in March last year. A, a your own prime minister set up a commission to deal with it. It found that excessive force was used by the police, but no action was taken against the No, it stopped. It stopped. Some cases I followed from here, from Geneva, with the prime minister directly and with the police. Uh, security forces and now things are different and I hope that we will continue until they can understand their, their, their obligation, how they should implement it according to the international law because we signed the treaty bodies, maybe you learned about that, all those without even any reservation but the people still, we are facing different yeah, and difficult circumstances. We are under the occupation. We have, the occupation we have, is we not have, causing have, you to torture your own yani people. Some, the occupation for, is some, not causing you. You can't blame Israel for some, you, the some, fact that your forces torture their own I, people. I will tell you something. Sometimes we, we are maybe uh, violating the international law with arrestment which come to the security issues because we want to protect our people. Some groups, maybe military groups, in this way we are protecting the safety and the security of our people. So we should not do so without a legal process accepted and agreed between us and according to the, our constitution. Your security services last year arrested dozens of journalists, activists, opposition members. No, 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 no. Yes, in September, cases, in September, a human rights two, defender, Issa Imro, was detained for seven yes. days because of a posting on a Facebook. Yes, I, I, I understand that. And in I June, you brought in a law on, on new cybercrime. Personally. And the issue, as يعني, I understand the issue exactly, it's in, in Hebrew between the police, two or three personnel and... Uh, this is from Human journalists. Rights Watch. Yes, Dozens yes, of yes. journalists, activists no, and no. opposition and members The human arrested. rights, they are saying what they want to say, but there is no dozens. They criticize if, if the Israelis if, as well. If, if you have the name of them, it will be good. It's these are, these are more examples of the environment like of tolerance that than, your president talks it's, about. It's less than ten, but for me, no one should be arrested. No one. But not dozens. You, you, seem, yani to, they are, you uh, seem to want a state that embodies all the worst excesses of the other Arab states. Restrictions on free speech, restrictions on the media and demonstrations, excessive force used on demonstrators, torture and ill treatment, high spending by your executive. You seem to want to live down to the worst expectations of the Arab world, don't you? I don't know from where you are talking about and if you are trying in this interview to give a very black picture on the behavior of the Palestinian Authority, I think that you are mistaken because what I'm quoting to you from to the do. UN, from your own human rights it's, it's, organizations, it's, 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 from it's, Western it's, human if, rights if organizations. If you are listening to the UN Watch, for example, they will make it from us, I mean, like, uh, I don't know, I don't want to talk about that, but it should not be taken for guarantee, those all information. You can go personally to visit well Palestine, and you'll meet with the I've people. been many times. I've and been you, many uh, times, and, and ask, people and complain ask. constantly about the corruption and the brutality of your authority. The mm. frustration is very high, but we are trying to keep the safety of our Palestinians. But we should go ahead with our international obligations and to respect the rights of our people. Because of that, we signed all those uh, treaties, one of them, which is very important, the civil and political, social, cultural, you and economic rights. You can sign all you want, but if you don't implement and now we are them, what's the use of signing them? You, you what's need, the use of need, signing them? You need to promote and awareness publicly with the security forces. There's a lot of programs, of training, that those personnel should respect their obligations according to the law. Some mistakes have been, but it's Ambassador, not a one of, one of the most worrying trends in Palestine, according to the opinion polls, is the lack of hope and the large percentage of Palestinians, 45% now, who want to return to an armed intifada. So under your guidance, under the Palestinian Authority's guidance, you have failed to offer people the hope that diplomacy and negotiation are the best ways of pursuing this may be, peace. This may be right because the frustration is very high. We didn't succeed until now to come up with a peaceful solution as we promised our people since the start of Oslo. And the problem is not the Palestinian leadership or the Palestinian side, it's the, our neighbors, the Israeli leadership, that they are not ready until now to meet with their international obligations and to sit and to sign 
and agreements which we know both of us what's the maximum at what's the minimum and president trump end, says you're end. not ready either now we are ready tomorrow you're to end the incubation according to the international uh, consensus and agreements tomorrow we are ready to sit and to sign there is no need by the way for further negotiations because we know vis-a-vis -vis the maximum and the minimum for us it's very clear ending the occupation started in 1967 and find an agreed agreement on the issue of the refugees the arab initiatives is a roadmap for all of that if they are ready tomorrow i was as i told you in the negotiations of first department was promising at that right. time but after after the assassination of rabin anyone who started to become close to those ideas you will find him okay. facing the justice because of scandals of corruption like okay. what's happened with 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 Olmart and Sylvan Shalom okay. the current the current Ibrahim prime Rashid. minister there is a lot of but until now he is surviving you can think what's behind Ibrahim all of that Ibrahim we're out of time thank you very much for being on conflict zone thank, thank you, you.